everybody and welcome back to the poor man's chemist in this video we are going to be making mercuric acetate from mercuric oxide and 50% acetic acid this prep comes from the handbook of preparative inorganic chemistry and we are doing it in half scale um, from what the textbook actually gives the textbook calls for yellow mercuric oxide I don't know what the deal is, man. Half the time when I make this shit, it turns out yellow, and half the time it turns out orange. When I looked up mercuric oxide on Wikipedia, it looked exactly like this. So we're going to hope that this works. Um, if anybody knows what's the difference and why sometimes it's yellow and why sometimes it's orange I would greatly appreciate it um, anyway so we're going to put this on hot water bath here now I have made sure that this hot water bath is at, right at 50 degrees Celsius the reason being that the textbook says mercuric acetate will decompose a little bit um, if water well it just says that it'll do it at around 100 C I don't know at what point it starts to do this and I have no idea so we're going to keep the temperature moderate and we're going to hope that it works man we're probably going to have to heat it up a little bit because um, the textbook is like it's talking about filtering this through um, uh, jacketed filter that's heated with hot water obviously i do not have a piece of glassware like that so i'm going to have to improvise um <clears throat> we're gonna make it up as we go so um business as usual <laughs> anyway here we go i am going to add the acid to this okay Little bit of bubbling. Oh, whoa. Okay. It turned into a giant solid mass there for a second. That's interesting. Not really sure what's up with that, but okay. Now, when I was reading up on mercuric acetate, I, I don't know, guys. It sounds like, based on some of its properties, that it might be um, fairly molecular. Some of its other properties make it sound like it's kind of ionic. I'm not really sure what to think. Okay, do we need to turn the heat up more here? Is that what we need to do? I just don't want to decompose it and have to start over again because that would be an absolute pain in the ass. It is kind of cold out here, though. All right, well, we'll turn up the heat and we'll see what that gets us. All right, everyone. That was a lot more painless than I thought it was going to be. Um, it, when the mercuric oxide dissolves in the acetic acid, it does not produce a lot of gas. In fact, except right at the very beginning, I didn't really notice any that I could, you know, say for sure was, oh, that's being caused by the mercuric oxide dissolving in the acid. Instead, what happened was just that the pile of mercuric oxide became smaller and smaller over time until it disappeared. Pretty convenient, right? Um, now, the textbook said to filter this. I'm not really sure what it is I'm supposed to be filtering off, though. There's a couple of little dark particles of just tree jizz. Um, I, I don't know that that's going to need a jacketed filter and all that hoo-ha. I mean, we'll just filter them out of there through... Um, Oh, I don't know, just a small little bit of, like, filter paper or something should catch all of them. And then, um, 
just what I'll do after I do that is evaporate this down a little bit more until I start to see crystals forming. Then I'm going to take it off the heat and I'm going to allow it to crystallize. Mercuric acetate is soluble in ethyl acetate. Apparently, you can even recrystallize it from warm or hot ethyl acetate. I, I can't remember which one it is. So I think, you know, once this crystallizes, we could either filter off the crystals and just suction filter them, you know, do it the way we usually do. Or maybe we can just extract the mercuric acetate into warm ethyl acetate and just go about you know then dry the ethyl acetate and um then just crystallize it out of there i'm not really sure exactly which way i'm going to go yet but i'm definitely going to filter this fucking tree jizz out of here god i hate this shit and um evaporate it down until it crystallizes some and then take it off the heat and let the whole mass crystallize and then I guess we'll go from there. So I will come back when I am at that point. All right, people. Would you look at this shit? Absolutely beautiful crystals of mercuric acetate. Now, this stuff has a health rating of four, so I wouldn't touch it if I were you. Um, you know, you want to be real careful with it. And it's supposed to be photosensitive. Although, when it's in the solution it crystallized from, it seems to be more or less okay. I, I don't know. I don't have... I've never seen mercuric... Look at that. Look at it. The light glint off of them. Um, I've never seen it before, so I don't really have any, you know, anything to give me some context here. Um, I'm thinking that given the, uh, the amount of mercuric oxide we use, the amount of solid that's there, there probably isn't a whole lot left in solution. I think the common ion effect is keeping um, a lot of it from, you know, dissolving in there. And I think, you know, looking over the textbook, it doesn't explicitly say that. But the way it's written and when you do the stoichiometry and I'm looking at it and I'm like, yeah, there's a good bit of excess acetic acid in here. Um, I'm thinking that's helping, you know make sure that a lot of it crystallizes out. So anyway, I think what we're gonna do is decant off the liquid, we'll transfer that into mercury waste. Um, just more fucking mercury waste that needs to be reprocessed. And then I will re-dissolve this stuff in hot ethyl acetate. We will separate the um, ethyl acetate from, you know, the aqueous portion of this and then we can let the um, ethyl acetate evaporate and that will give us our pure mercuric acetate so let's do that as soon as i put on some gloves that's right kids pmc is wearing gloves for this one because i'm not stupid and i don't want to die or end up with lesions all over my skin and ah, kill me <laughs> Okay, here comes the hot ethyl acetate. I really hope this stuff is reasonably soluble in this. Oh, hello. Why are we turning colors? You know, that's funny, because I think mercuric chloride is also soluble in ethyl acetate. I'm sure that basically nothing is showing up because it's bright white on white. <laughs> well, maybe it's not that soluble. Ethyl acetate was boiling a minute ago. Still pretty warm. Huh, that is weird. A whitish coating of our stuff. So it is going into solution. It's just taking its sweet ass time about it, and we'll probably take more stuff in order to fully do it, because of course it will. Hey, well, if that's the case, why don't we just dump it into the beaker with the ethyl acetate? All right, why make things difficult for ourselves?
Did I put that on this glove? Oh, I got to change. Oh, shit. It's on both these gloves. Fuck. Ah! Never trust gloves, kids. Especially when you're working with weird shit that very few other people do. You never know if they're really going to protect you or not. All right, um, you know what? We're just gonna waste that. Let's see, let's just try stirring this bitch first. At least with this thing, I can use beaker tongs to move this. Okay, no, 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 no fast. Jesus fucking Christ. Stop trying to kill me. I don't think mercuric acetate likes me very much. Fuck you, mercuric acetate. Don't think because I created you that I actually like your ass. I just want to use you. That's right. <laughs> you thought I brought you into the world to go and be, live a nice, fulfilling life. Nah, bitch, I brought you into the world so I can pimp your ass <laughs> to, to some alkenes. <laughs> I absolutely have to cut that out of the video. That just sounded really weird. I don't even know where that came from. <laughs> Oh, whoa, that's happening quickly. Now, we don't want it to get hot, um, or it will decompose into a yellow basic salt. I thought I saw a hint of it earlier, so clearly we have to be very, very, very careful, because I think I just saw a hint of it again, and that would really fuck up our shit. Okay. Um, huh. Well... I can always just add more ethyl acetate to it. Okay, this is batshit crazy, and this is at a really awkward angle, but I want you guys to see that. See that yellow stuff at the bottom? Yeah, that's from trying to warm this shit up. That is the breakdown product. That is the basic salt, which I think for the purposes of oxymercuration, demercuration is fucking useless. However, on the flip side, that tells us that we were successful. Our crystals are indeed mercuric acetate. And, you know, some of which has definitely gone into solution. So we can absolutely recover that. Of this solid matter that's in the beaker, I don't think it's all ruined. I think we can still recover some of it. So I am going to work on that. I'm not going to try to film it all because I'm not I'm just going to play this by ear guys um I, I will come back when um this minor issue has been resolved <laughs> okay everybody over just a few minutes this stuff is starting to go kind of yellowish all throughout everything was fine when it was still solid crystals in the solution that it crystallized from. Put it in this, and immediately it's like changes are starting. The color is going to an off-white, and we're definitely getting more yellow tinge throughout. I may have completely ruined my product by doing this. But, I mean, this is what the textbook said to do. Um, shit. You know, given, oh, hello, come on, given how um, easy the organic textbook says oxymercuration, demercuration is to pull off, I'm almost wondering if it isn't 100% pure and we just have to live with like a little bit of acetate and purity or something, is that really the end of the world? I mean, we're not writing any papers here. All right, everyone, here is our final product. Um... This prep is overall kind of dangerous. It's not that the making of this stuff is dangerous. It's not even difficult. It's the final product, man. This stuff forms a heavy dust, which is good. At least it settles out rapidly. 
but this stuff freely dissolves in water it crystallizes in little pearly flakes they're very pretty to look at but very dangerous see how it's static clings to everything too yeah i just had to hose down the entire bench just to make sure i got rid of any traces of this stuff man it was quite nerve-wracking getting it from the dish into the fucking bottle um but it is done we have some it is very pretty it's very nice it's you know pearly white and sparkly and i love everything about it it's incredibly deadly and it's so pretty pretty death crystals yay my favorites um so yeah yeah well now we can use this to do oxymercuration demercuration once i finally i gotta check a few things i have a good selection of alkenes but they got some other functional groups on them so I gotta make sure those are not going to interfere with anything um, but if my idea works out I mean it should be reasonably easy to prove I think that, <laughs> that it worked um, there's another thing we can do with this too that I thought was very cool um, you can use mercuric acetate to make both black and red mercuric sulfide. That's something that I would actually like to do one day, man. Um, you know, making cinnabar would be pretty damn neat. And, I don't know, from mercuric acetate, it just seems easier than from anything else that I've read about. So we may give that a try here at some point, too. But this is destined to be used for some organic chemistry because... It's long past time for us to do so. Anyway, if you liked that video, give it a thumbs up. And if you didn't like it, well, you just don't appreciate good things in life, I guess. Subscribe, comment, share the video. Maybe, maybe donate a few dollars to this channel and support this endeavor. That'd be really awesome. And until the next one, you guys, I will see you later. Look at it, pretty death crystals. Look at those sparkles. They're sparkly. It's so fucking beautiful. Yay!